what if your problems don't have to continue to stay your problems? What if you don't have to continue to be locked in this repetitive cycle of waiting for all of the hell shitstorm to be over? That is what we are going to cover today with a very simple technique that I have developed that anybody can begin practicing regardless of your level of self-awareness because that's what I'm going to help you build today, the ability to reflect within a very simple way. My name is Lucian St. James. I am a consciousness and confidence mentor. I also work as a mental health and substance use counselor, and I just live this stuff. I just enjoy it. I enjoy enriching myself. I think my primary goal here on this earth is to become the most elevated version of myself, and in doing so, I help other people to do the same by living out a system of self-liberation called living a low trip lifestyle, the step into main character energy, how to develop self-confidence, regulate your emotions, build mental resilience, and understand that this 3D reality we live in to try to control it externally is a futile effort, but that we can create what we want to see from within. So that's what I help people to do. And that's what this channel is all about and the number one thing and i say the number one thing everybody says the number one thing but just the thing that comes to mind right now when i think about all of the individuals i've seen i mean i see maybe at this point in time i don't know maybe about 30 individuals per week with two groups that i facilitate and one of the most prominent challenges that continues to emerge when individuals are working through their healing journey is this idea that my past predicts my future in many ways either the past predicts my future because my parents said it would the past predicts my future because i believe that's what the case is the past predicts my future because nothing else has ever happened so i can't understand and conceptualize and perceive of anything else happening there's no reason to believe that anything else is happening and what i'm going to speak to today is another aspect of this is the past is going to keep happening because I don't know how to stop the cycle. If I even know that there's a cycle that exists and most of our problems are habitual. Most of our problems are repetitive. I mean, most everything about human behavior uh, is very programmable by nature. So when we don't have access to our internal experience, when we don't know what emotions we are experiencing on a predominant basis, when we're not aware of how our actions are creating outcomes, creating consequences in our lives. And there's a reason we, we you know, I call it kind of a can't or won't conundrum, uh, but when we're not aware of how our actions are contributing to the things that we deal with that we don't want to deal with, uh, we get stuck in a, like a hamster wheel of, helplessness and of despair and of, you know, you list the negative emotion that's going to be thrown in with that. So first, understanding and dissecting shame. Now that in and of itself could be a, a different video, but to speak very briefly on it is that your past is not predictive and that you do not have to continue making the same mistakes simply because you've made them before. Because when we fail to take accountability for the ways that we've contributed to our own problems. Usually it comes from this place and this understanding inside that if I admit to myself that I might've been at the root of some of my problems that I deal with, then that's going to make me feel really bad about myself. Then that's going to make me hate myself. Uh, then that's going to make me feel worthless or make me feel, you know, again, insert the negative emotion. And this is all happening unconsciously. I mean, some people might be reasoning this actively consciously, but you know, we have all of the shame and all of this guilt unconsciously that prevents us from really being able to take a look at what's going on and how are we adding to it. And because we don't do that work, because we're usually largely so unaware of how we're participating in the sinking of our own ship, because it just feels better to blame somebody else. It's more fun to blame somebody else. You don't have to do anything to blame somebody else. You know, it's your parents' fault, it's the government's fault, it's your friend's fault, it's your coworker's fault. Everything else is somebody else's fault. 
And I'm not saying that those are not real conditions that are happening. You know, if you went through a traumatic childhood or you have things that you're dealing with, likely there are other individuals involved. They're certainly not invalidating that, but you can't control that. <laughs> and that's what's at the bottom line of this is that you cannot do anything about that. So when we fail to take accountability for the things that are happening in our lives, we can never do anything about them. If, you know, it's, if the, like I had a situation, it taught me a very good lesson actually. And then we're going to get to the technique where the neighbors, cause we, uh, so my backyard is arranged where it's like just a bunch of like, it's a lot of space, but it's a lot of open plots and there are no fences. So the neighbor's yard just bleeds into ours and our yard bleeds into the next neighbor's yard and so on and so forth. It's rural Illinois. I love it, <laughs> but there is this downfall. So the neighbor started walking their dog because there's so much land. I mean, you can walk around this property uh, and they're elderly. I mean, I don't think they're that old, but they're, you know, I guess whatever, they've got health issues. Uh, so they were walking the dog and they started letting the dog, like started walking the dog intentionally over by our fire pit, which is in the back part of the property and uh, started letting the dog like shit there. And at first I was living, cause I, I mean, I have this like strong, because again, what am I talking to you about accountability? And that goes from walking your dogs to owning your emotions, to understanding how you participate in your outcome. So I was pissed. I lost it. And it was really out of character for me. Uh, I will say it's out of character, but I've worked very hard. This was last year though. Uh, but I, I worked very hard to, you know, you know, manage, manage emotions. That's what it teaches people to do. I'm not going to say that I do it perfectly all the time, but I really do try my best to live out uh, what it is that I teach specifically within the low trip lifestyle framework and those four tenets. And this, this tenet speaks to the tenet of unconditional love, unconditional acceptance. Um, and what I decided there was rather than continually energetically charge the situation, this negative situation with more negativity, more anger, more rage about something that was happening while I was at work that I could not control. I just decided to accept the situation. I just decided that, you know what, one of my daily chores is going to be to go clean up the dog poop by my fire pit because I use my fire pit and I don't want dog poop by my fire pit. I can't control the people are doing that, but I can't control how I respond to it. So with that that's a situation where yes is there a real actual party who has caused a real actual fault and has led to a real actual consequence that i have to deal with that is just plain not fair and that's a super like that's a very light-hearted example i mean we're i know many of you out there have been through just horrendous things at the hands of other people that you did not deserve but at what point in time does it become more painful to stay locked in a past of a prison of just uh just lost, I mean, just, just pain. <laughs> I don't even know how, how else to describe it. I mean, you know, how long are you going to remain trapped in that trauma and trapped in that experience, blaming them saying, well, I wouldn't be this way if X, Y, or Z, or had they not done this, you know, there are real things that have happened to you that were not your fault. However, what do you plan to do? I mean, because you've got to clean up. I mean, if they made a mess for you, it's still your mess. And I know that sucks. I know that it's just not fair. There's nothing fair about it. There really isn't. So to the technique in terms of what to do about this and in reviewing this previous point that when we have shame, there should be no shame about the mistakes that you've made. Now, dissecting shame and how to do that is a bit different. And if you'd like some help with that, I will drop specifically, like if you'd like some specific help with that, um, you can drop a comment. I can make a video about it. Uh, TikTok as well. Everything's there. Do one on YouTube, do a podcast about it, or we can work one on one. Lots of options there in terms of how to engage with this content. But in terms of addressing shame, when we hate ourselves for the mistakes that we've made and that, but that self-hatred becomes a pattern, we start to lose sight of how to take ownership of the things that we have contributed to in our lives because we feel so bad about ourselves. You know, when you already feel so bad about yourself, you don't want to look in the mirror and say, and I caused this problem too. But the thing is, is the ability to do that and to weather that internal storm is your power. Because the more that you are upset and handing away your power to people and things that you cannot influence, the more they're going to feel powerless. So to the technique, of what to do when you're trying to right the wrong of any mistake, when you're working through a problem, even if you're just living in day to day, I mean, this can really truly be applied anywhere. It's very simple. It's a self-reflective, self-awareness, consciousness exercise called 
reassess and reroute. Reassess and reroute. If you're getting consequences, you're dealing with consequences, dealing with outcomes that are undesirable for you repeatedly. I mean, it could be like, you know, why do I keep dating this type of asshole guy? Well, rather than blaming all the guys out there, because here's the thing, you're not going to get rid of that. You know, the asshole guys are out there. Like that's that, that point, like focusing on that point specifically is probably not going to be to uh, the best use of your time and energy. And if the answer is, and I know this because I used to love to date destructive unstable just fiercely sexy women i mean just I, I just that was my thing and they had to be like 15 to 20 years older than me so i get this specific example uh but you know just the answer of like you know, well why do you like these guys you know like well they're hot or or something superficial i mean you have to really dig deep into yourself you know follow a trail of whys when you get one why go to another when you get a second why go to another well you know why do you like these guys well i think they're hot okay why do you think they're hot well uh why do you think they're hot? Uh, yeah, you have to be, you have to come up with that. Uh, well, I, I like how protective they can get. Okay. Why do you like how protective they can get? They, how, why do you like how protective they can get? Well, because it makes me feel safe. Why do you need to feel safe? You, you keep going with that line of questioning there. So reroute, sorry, reassess and reroute, reassess, reassess your day every single day. Reassess everything that you experience throughout a week so much as you can. I'm not saying get obsessive about it and, and write everything down. But the main problem is that we're not thinking. We're just living. We're just breathing. We're existing. But we're not thinking. We're not taking conscious time to reflect on what we're doing, what we're experiencing, how those things are impacting us, and if we need to make any changes. Like That's what it means to really process and really think. So with any problem that you're having, and this also goes, this is also a perfect of use this exercise with my perfectionist as well, because perfectionists, you know, and anxious types in general, people pleasers are always very concerned about, and I, I know this, you know, no sense of superiority, are always very concerned about, well, what is the right thing to do? Now, there are certain things that you, you know, I mean, you have to operate, I'm not saying operate without, outside of the bounds of, you know, the federal law. But in terms of, should I go here? Should I go there? Should I ask this person out? Should I not? Uh, should I take this job? Should I not? You know, those types of decisions, there really is no right answer. There's there's maybe a an answer that is more in alignment with your preferences and your desires. But in terms of objectively right answers in matters that are incredibly subjective and open-ended, and then you looking for that certainty in that open subjectivity and saying that I will not make a decision until I am certain something that is not for sure certain that I won't know how it's going to make me feel or what the outcome will be until I do it. When you're looking for certainty and something as uncertain as that, you're going to say stuck, you're going to say stagnant, you're going to feel afraid, you're going to step into self-sabotage, procrastination. So in helping those types of individuals, what we've done is the reassess and reroute. Make the decision, Make the figure out what's in alignment with your desires first, make the decision. And if the decision, whatever the outcome of the decision is, you're not going to know till you're in it, get in it, figure it out and reassess. And if it was out of alignment and you made a mistake or, you know, or if you got your feelings hurt or, or something maybe undesirable happened, then reassess the process. Then look at what happened, why it happened, how you contributed to it. Maybe things that were out of your control as well, things that you didn't have any control over that you kind of just had to accept and you had to weather. So reassess the situation and then reroute. So use that reassessment information of what went wrong as information about what to do moving forward, what to do, how to use that information to make a new decision the next time. And that's often what we don't do. So what typically happens is we make these mistakes. We get locked in so much guilt and shame. We give away all our power. We blame other people. And then we don't learn anything. And then we just keep doing the same thing. I promise you, this is very simple to reassess and reroute, to self-reflect, to look back at what happened. I mean, what is so much as you can recollect. I mean, there are certain situations that were so profound in my life. 
uh, in a negative way. <laughs> uh, but because they were so negative, they they brought the greatest amount of knowledge to me about what I don't want in my life. And sometimes as I reflect back on those things, not that I ruminate, not that you know I'm obsessive, but as those, those thoughts come up and I arrive at sometimes even new understandings or new levels of consciousness of how that thing applied at the time that I wasn't aware of that now I understand because I'm continuing to grow myself. I'm continuing to grow my awareness to understand myself, my emotional experience and the world around me, you know, by way of my perception, which is all I have access to. So there can, there's so much to gain from the experience of your past. You can be your own teacher. And if you'd like to learn how to be your own teacher, then find someone, enroll a coach, enroll with me, Find somebody to help you understand how you can be your own teacher. So you don't need to be in therapy for years. So you don't need to keep watching video after video after video, wondering what to do about this. Just reassess, make a decision. So long as it's not hurting yourself or others, in it, or you know, if there's going to be a marginal amount of risk, you know, then fine. And use that information to reroute. Look within, and when.